So one of the coolest things to be able to do among other, I guess, a bunch of cool things to do after you've taken this course is to be able to look at a cloud and to tell somebody its name, its general name. And we're going to talk about 10 different names to how to name a cloud. And you're going to see it's kind of like granimals, the, the old while back, they used to be able used to be able to go to your closet for your kids and pick out a shirt and a bottom and I don't know it would match. But anyway, so you need to pick out two kind of Latin root words to describe that cloud. There's ten types of clouds. You're going to describe it with regard to um, it's what we call its stability. Um, and we talked about stability in chapter four. Remember, if a chunk of air wants to rise or has a tendency to rise for whatever reason. Um, we say that chunk of air is unstable. So unstable air will give us fluffy clouds. So unstable air giving us fluffy clouds, those clouds that are fluffy have kind of the word cumulo or cumulus or um, um, in them. Okay. Um, if the cloud is formed uh, because water has condensed, but it's kind of a, it's a stable, it's a stable situation. Those have basically no kind of depth to them. They're flat. They have the name, the Latin root stratus or strato or something in them. Okay. The other thing you do about a cloud is you have to say, generally speaking, what what elevation or what altitude it is. Now you're like, I have no idea, and I'm going to give you kind of a hint to that. And the more you look at clouds and kind of name a cloud, the more you're like, oh, I know that that is kind of at this elevation. You basically look at the sky, this, the, the, the troposphere, because that's where most of our clouds are, and you break it into three layers. The troposphere near the Earth's surface is um, the low clouds. Then we have our middle clouds, and we're going to, if it's a middle cloud, we're going to use the prefix alto or the word alto. The piece of the word alto is going to be in that cloud name. If the clouds are high, then they're going to have the cirro or cirrus sort of name, okay? So um, whether they're um, flat or fluffy, Flat would be stratus or strato. Uh, fluffy would be cumulo or cumulus. And whether they're low, middle, or high. I didn't say yet, but if they're kind of a low cloud, relatively speaking, then they have no designation for being low. Okay? They just won't have alto or cirro or cirrus. Okay? So, or middle cloud has an alto. High cloud has a cirro sort of thing. Now, the last thing to name one of these 10 types of clouds is, is it precipitating? We're going to talk more about what ultimately leads to a cloud um, crying or, or precipitation, water, liquid water falling from that cloud. But there are two types of precipitating clouds, and you'll see the, the, the Latin um, word or nimbus or nimbo in them. So look for that. That means it's precipitating. Okay? So, I mentioned that you're going to have to basically break the strata, the, excuse me, the troposphere into three sections, low, middle, and high. And so these would be low clouds, middle clouds, and high clouds. And you're like, I don't know. So, because one of the things you're going to see, especially the flat, for instance, the fluffy, excuse me, the fluffy clouds, the unstable clouds, the clouds that kind of are fluffy, they are, there are low um, cumulo type clouds, middle cumulo type clouds, and high cumulo type clouds. And this slide says, well, how do you differentiate which is which? Basically, if you extend your arm, and if the cloud is about as big as your fist, that's the biggest of the three options. And if it's about as big as your fist, then that means it's relatively close, and that means it's a low cloud. If you extend your arm and the cloud is about as big as your thumb, then that means it's a middle cloud. If you extend fluffy cloud, this is what we're talking about here. If you extend your arm and the fluffy cloud is about the size of your pinky, then that means it's relatively high up. So it has a zero um, sort of prefix. Okay. So these will be cumulus clouds. These will be alto cumulus, and these will be um, um, sorry, zero cumulus. So because they're fluffy. So here are the 10 cloud types. Let's see if I can kind of look at this figure, all sorts of figures like this. If you don't like this figure, um, there are all sorts of figures out there. This one's from your textbook. Um, so let's go ahead and do you see where the middle clouds are kind of broken right here? Okay. So anything here to, let's see, here are alto, and I, I'm afraid my kind of, uh, 
I don't have my uh, tablet here, so my drawing is awful. <laughs> we have alto stratus, alto meaning middle, flat stratus. We have alto cumulus, so if you extended your arm, these would be what, about the size of your thumb? Sorry. <laughs> okay. And then we have down here low clouds. We have just plain stratus. Remember, if they're low, you don't use alto or cirro or cirrus. And then we have just plain old cumulus. Okay, that's relatively low cloud. That must be about the size of your fist. And then let's look at the high clouds. We have high clouds up here. You need to use the prefix cirro or cirrus. Uh, so here we have cirro stratus. So cirro meaning high, stratus meaning flat. Okay, and here we have cirro meaning high, cumulus meaning fluffy. Okay, um, cirro cumulus be about the size of your pinky if you extended your arm. And then we have cirrus up here. Cirrus are another type of flat cloud, but they are even higher than cirro stratus. The cirrus, and I'll mention this on a slide coming up, but they kind of look like um, the, the tail of a horse. They kind of like they're called mare, as in a horse, mare's tails. So, cirro cumulus to me kind of look like cotton balls. Okay, um, cirro stratus, the high clouds really kind of give us some. I just love high clouds. I love the storm clouds too. Um, cirro stratus sometimes can give an optical effect called, um, well, several optical effects we'll talk about in chapter 16. Let's see, which two didn't I mention? The precipitating clouds. Okay, so they need to have the word NIMB with them. We have two precipitating clouds. We have the precipitating cloud that comes from stable, um, stable air, basically, flat, not ascending air. Um, so they would have the stratus name and nimbo goes on as a prefix. So nimbo stratus is a precipitating cloud that basically has no what we call vertical development. Vertical development is associated with fluffy clouds on stable air. Okay. So the other type of precipitating cloud is the one we all love too. Um, over here we have, I bet you've heard of this one, you people that are into severe weather, nimbus cumulo. Cumulo meaning a fair bit of instability, and nimbus meaning precipitating. So cumulo nimbus clouds are those ones that are storm clouds. So here is a table from your textbook. I think it does a good job. One of the things you might want to go ahead and familiarize yourself with, I'm not sure if necessarily be on a test, but notice that each of the ten cloud types has a two-letter designation in there here. This is a good um, a good table to kind of give you some um, hints again as if you're really into wanting to look at a cloud and to give it a name. Now one of the things I'll warn you is that at any given time it seems to me that you can look at the sky and there will be an assortment of clouds there. Why is that? Well you have an assortment of chunks of air that have risen to their um, with an assortment of chunks of air that had had, a, had different moisture content, had different lifting mechanisms perhaps. So, you know, it's definitely possible to, at a given time, have um, different types of clouds up there. Let's see. All right. So, um, I'm just going to kind of, maybe not spend too much time, to just kind of look at the 10 cloud types. And I'll show you an 11th cloud type here on uh, mis as miscellaneous clouds coming up. Actually, there are more than just one miscellaneous cloud, but you'll see what I mean. So stratus clouds, meaning uh, the fact that they don't have any alto, they're not middle, they don't have a zero, they're not upper. Stratus clouds are those lower level flat clouds, okay? So uh, fog would fall into that kind of category of not necessarily having, uh, uh, being unstable and being kind of flat. But what a cloud, excuse me, what a fog is, is basically a cloud at ground level. Um, stratocumulus, um, if you're like, oh, that sounds like an oxymoron, you're right. Because strato or stratus means layered, and cumulo or cumulus here means like fluffy. So we have layered fluffy, and I'll kind of show you a picture of that. But these generally are lower level clouds again. Um, the last type of lower level cloud would be simply cumulus cloud, and these are, these are fun to look at. Um, they, they're about as big as your fist, and you kind of see them puffy. 
cumulus clouds can lead to, can blossom into cumulonimbus clouds. So there's actually kind of an assortment of cumulus clouds, but um, there are fair weather cumulus and then there are cumulus congestus or towering cumulus that um, would lead possibly to cumulonimbus clouds. So here are um, your relatively low clouds. There's our cumulus clouds up here. Um, stratus clouds here, doesn't that look like fog? Okay, these are all low level clouds. And stratocumulus, can you see kind of a little puffs but also um, a, a degree of stability there with those clouds. So precipitating clouds, remember there's two types of precipitating clouds. They have the NIMB in them, so nimbostratus Nimbo precipitating stratus flat. Okay, so um, uh, these you just get kind of ongoing precipitation. You don't, and when we talk about fronts, uh, nimbo stratus fronts, excuse me, nimbo stratus clouds that bring us precipitation are oftentimes associated with warm fronts. Um, cumulo nimbus clouds, cumulo meaning a fair bit of vertical development, meaning unstable air. Nimbus meaning precipitating. So those would be our, um, and when we talk about severe weather, we're going to see that actually this vertical development within this cumulonimbus cloud, um, we have a lot of chaos. <laughs> and that's what brings us our severe weather. Um, so this is a picture of a cumulonimbus cloud. If it's a cumulonimbus cloud, then it must be precipitating at the base. And we talk about severe weather. One of the things we're going to talk about, I don't know if you can kind of see this, um, cumulonimbus clouds kind of have a flattening out, and it's kind of neat because what the reason they're flattening out is because they're bumping up against the top of the troposphere. They're bumping up against the tropopause, and they're kind of flattening out. And sometimes they will punch a hole in the tropopause into the stratosphere, which is the layer above the troposphere, um, and we call these overshooting tops. But anyway, um, so that's a cumulonimbus cloud. I guess I didn't have a nimbostratus cloud. Okay. Um, middle clouds then, they have to have the word alto. So alto stratus means a middle cloud that's kind of layered and I have a picture coming up um, with regard to them. Now these layered clouds, they're not thick. So layered clouds like um, cirrostratus and cirrus and alto stratus and stratus to a lesser degree. Since they're kind of thin, sometimes they can give us some kind of cool optical effects. So sometimes alto stratus clouds, you can actually see the disk of the sun or the moon behind the cloud and it looks kind of watery. The sun or the moon looks kind of watery. I should kind of maybe show you a picture of that coming up. Um, so alto cumulus, the fact it has alto in the name means it's a middle cloud. Cumulus means it's kind of fluffy. So I'll show you kind of a picture of this. Now again, remember we said that if you extend your arm, alto cumulus cloud should be about the size of your thumb. So here um, on this side, can you kind of see the watery appearance of the sun? Okay, the reason it appears watery, kind of drawn out, the disk is, has to do with the fact that there's a cloud between us and the sun. Um, and it's kind of a thin stratus type cloud, middle cloud, alto stratus. So over here we have, um, these look like um, big cotton balls. <laughs> so these hopefully would be about the size of your thumb. Kind of a nice looking row of clouds. Okay, middle clouds, fluffy clouds, alto cumulus. Um, the last group of clouds would be the high clouds. So we have um, cirro cumulus, cirro meaning um, high, cumulus meaning fluffy. So these would be about the size of your pinky. So these look like cotton balls, I think. Um, cirrostratus clouds would be high clouds and um, wispy. Um, and again, in chapter 16, we'll talk about how cirrostratus clouds can give us kind of some cool effect, especially if those clouds are composed of solid water, ice crystals. And then the last cloud we have are the mare's tails clouds. They're the cirrus clouds. The fact that they have cir, S, or C-I-R in the name, hopefully you recognize cirrus clouds are upper level clouds. And they are um, also a flat cloud. They are stable air. So they are the ones that look like mare's tails. So here we have cirrus clouds. Here we have cirrocumulus clouds. And here we have cirrostratus clouds, cirrostratus, high level, kind of flat. 
And can I don't know if you can kind of see that. Um, this would be, if you can kind of see this, uh, kind of the arc around the sun. That actually is what we call a halo. We'll talk about that.